This is BBC One. Liquid News with Christopher Price. Good evening. These are the week's headlining stories. A right royal jelly deal knees up. HRH goes east to meet the Wolford Royals. Life through a real life lens. We have an exclusive look at the new Robbie documentary. And may the DIY force be with you. Star Wars goes homemade suburban. Hello, my name is Christopher. I hope you're well. Welcome to the pick of the week's entertainment news from our nightly live outing at 7pm over on BBC Choice. First up, make the jokes yourself, but there was a queen in the building this week, and it wasn't me or Barrymore. Her Majesty popped into Television Centre as part of a royal day trip out to celebrate broadcasting. But the highlight was a meeting with another famous Windsor in Albert Square. Following the royal party with a big posy, Max Flint for Liquid News. Now on BBC One, starring Phil Windsor as Phil Mitchell, Elizabeth II as Peggy, Princess Margaret as Pauline Fowler and Wellard as Edward, it's Buck Enders. Ooh, isn't she small? Barbara Windsor, not the Queen. In the great showdown between the two Walford witches, cheery Pauline got to meet the monarch first, but was pipped by Babs, who got to give Liz the full tour of the Vic. That's where Tiff died, I slapped Pat there, Phil slapped me here, you know the kind of stuff. I mean, she seemed to know a bit about it. I said, would you like to come behind the, uh, and the bar and see where I work? I was a bit embarrassed, actually, because there was all bottle tops all over the place. <laughs> there, was, there was the half a laugh. I'd been in the scene yesterday, and, of course, it hadn't been cleaned up. In royal comedy style, Philip had to ask Ian Beale if he was an actor or a technician. Clearly, he's a regular viewer. And Natalie and Barry's baby will be a boy, because the Queen saw the dolls Willie and put two and two together. After a quick tour of ITN, they came back to the BBC and TV Centre for a special edition of Blue Peter. Both the Palace and the BBC reckon that Liquid News hasn't quite got the gravitas to cover all events, so by the time we've been let in the Blue Peter studio here, the Queen's long gone. This is a badge of shame in royal journalism, you know. Now, Your Majesty, on behalf of everybody on Blue Peter, I'd like to present you with what is normally given as the programme's highest award, it's our Gold Blue Peter badge. Oh. And our badges allow our viewers who win them to get into all sorts of places free. And you might be interested to know you can get into the town of London free with this. Oh, it's a Gold Blue Peter badge. Now, what are the chances of her ever wearing that? That's splendid, it's great. So just tell me, what did the Queen do to get a Blue Peter badge? Well, that's a very good question. I think, one, she chose us to come and visit. She went to EastEnders and chose Blue Peter, so that's quite deserving in itself. But as I said to her, I think it's a great way of getting into the Tower of London for free. Corgis, why don't you get yourself a real dog, said the Labrador. Max Flint, BBC News. Lots of dog sniffing there. Our entertainment news commentator this week is the actress, TV presenter and soap expert, <gasps> Miss Emma Kennedy. Surely it can't be me. It is. <laughs> we booked you. And we also welcome two of the EastEnders, uh, whose set was visited by the Queen this week. We're delighted to welcome uh, Casey Ainsworth and Alex Fairns, who played the troubled husband and wife team Lil Mo. See, I did the rap yeah, version yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, Sorry. Yeah, Little Mo yeah, and yeah. Uh, bling, bling, Trevor Morgan. How are you doing, guys? Good to see you with us. I did all Thank right. you very much. much. Either of you two Republicans? Uh, you said you wouldn't ask that question. <laughs> you, <laughs> you, you, See, I, I am a little bit, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you weren't on set, you were having... No, I just have a problem with the bone dying in front of anyone, really. That's, you know, so I just... Uh, I don't <laughs> it's not what you said either. last yeah. night. <laughs> Hello, that's Ooh. exclusive. Ooh, it's EastEnders humour already coming out. But you were there, weren't I you? I was there, yeah. I did see her, yeah, she did. What was the preparations like? I mean, just talk us through the build-up, because she came to TV Centre here, yeah. and people were genuinely excited, raced up yeah. some grandstands, Moist, crying, yeah, all over the place. Him. What was it like in the square? Oh, no, it was. It was fantastic, actually. It was really good. Apart from the fact that you you had to give your firstborn child in order to get into the building nice. when he came yeah. in, <laughs> and the pint of blood and all that. But it was actually it was all right. It was all right. At, at cool. any point, did she say, "If it's on one's doorstep, it is one's business"? No, did she? she didn't quote Mo. Funnily enough. No. That was classy, though. I like that. <laughs> Emma is an actress as well. I just like to put it out <laughs> at, at this yeah, particular stage. Uh, what about Adam Wood yet? Of course, there was that incident with Prince Philip. Are you mm. an operator? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I wasn't witness to that. I was just in the Vic. Mm. I was in the Vic with Babs. 
with bats. What did you yeah. do? Yeah. Well, we did, they had this sort of scene that they were sort of filming, and we must have rehearsed it about 18 times, and we never, ever rehearse <laughs> scenes. They just go, oh, come on, quick, go for it. So um, it was uh, unusual. Are we allowed to know what the scene was? It was the scene with, I think it was Barry and the baby, but the bad thing was, was that, um, uh, Lucy Speed had the baby. She's yes. got the baby on, and um, as she was uh, she was playing with the baby's hands, it's a little silicon baby, and one of the, the fingers fell off. Oh, <laughs> so well, baby only had four fingers. No. In, in the run up to the Queen's Fair, there's all that hullabaloo is the word I'm choosing to use. <laughs> Pauline Fowler yeah. and, and Babs Babs Windsor they wasn't about who would meet her first. Yeah. There must have been mm. a few jokes on set about Come that. On. Dish it. I don't, I didn't well, I, well, they actually did have a fist fight, but you know, <laughs> there wasn't many people there. Were there, were there wings flying? <laughs> there was everything yeah. flying, yeah. Who would have won that fight? Didn't first, so. <laughs> Barbara first. Um, it was Barbara. Pauline was Fowler. It, yeah, Barbara, Pauline? Barbara took yeah. Queen. I like the way we're using their, their actress names. Just finally, Emma, she, she yes. doesn't watch EastEnders, which the is the, the big discovery we made yesterday oh. because it's on at a difficult time. Well, no, she watches Coronation Street. She's committed to it. And Emma Dale. Emma Dale's her favourite. It's all about farms. Yeah. Is that true? Are you making that up? I'm making it up, obviously. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Lots of dogs. She's a big fan of Crossroads. Uh, we have some exclusive footage, though, because she's, she's a big fan of Liquid News, even Is though she? she watches Emmerdale at seven the same time. Well, a queen loves well. a queen. <laughs> yeah, we've had those jokes before. Yes, this is our exclusive on. footage of uh, just BBC staff's reaction as she gets into a lift with the queen in it. Shock. Oh. <laughs> She watches Liquid News every night, of course. I've got something to tell you about Jeanette Charles, of course. That's, <laughs> that's not her, that's, that's not the real Jeanette queen. Charles, Thank you very it? much. <laughs> she watches us for the So Solid Crew News. <laughs> <laughs> she's big with her posse. Did you know the queen's releasing a rap record? <laughs> is she? No, she's not. She's no. got the best bling bling in Britain. But you know, Jeanette Charles there. Uh, it's not Jeanette Charles. It is Jeanette Charles, the, the queen it's famous impersonator. Charles, and she calls herself the original and the best. And if anyone else tries to do Queen Looky Likey, she has them. That wasn't Jeanette Charles, no, by the way, Jeanette but anyway. Charles. Looky like it. We'll continue Jeanette this Charles. very <laughs> interesting debate coming up later in the show. Thanks yeah, for that, Emma. My pleasure. Now, upcoming Whinge When You're Winning, we go backstage with Robbie. That's next. First, the man... See, the controversy goes on. Jeanette or not, who knows? First, the man who pulls Harry Potter's strings is just cool to say he's sorry to Michael Jackson. Ooh. Director Chris Columbus recently revealed that he'd banned Harry star Daniel Radcliffe from answering any calls from Michael. He's now phoned Jackson to say he was only worried that the young wizard may be getting too caught up in the cult of... Celebrity. Mm. Is that what you call it? It's a great now, way to get the kids started on the occult, isn't it, Harry Potter? <laughs> anyway, carry on, Chris. I have never <laughs> slept with men, but the thought has passed my mind. For the direct quote from herself. Yeah. Another tantalising what's my sexuality quote from by curious Robbie Williams. This time he's teasing and titillating in a new Warts and All cinema documentary called Nobody Someday. It's uncomfortable. Yeah, I am. Shot Thank in you. 15 different cities. It's a self-funded portrait of the robster as we've never seen him before. Steph West puts on some protective gloves for this exclusive first look at Robbie's viral growths. In return for 24-hour access to Robbie, the filmmakers had to agree to give him editorial control. So we get footage that confirms what we already know. He's tortured. Yeah! I'm in fear. I've never enjoyed it. I've never enjoyed anything about it. It's just a shame we have to get on stage. <laughs> and he's addicted to self-loathing. Let me entertain you. Good song, got bored of it. All before I die. Crap. She's the one. I hate that one. But things look up when Robbie gets onto what kind of tub you need to entertain groupies. So, you happy with your accommodation? No, I'm not. Call this a bathroom? I have about five birds in here. They're not going to get in. Yeah, I sort of pulled a girl. She was lovely. She was just on Planet Fan. We went to sleep. I woke up and said, Whoa! Oh. <laughs> she turned to me and she went, Robbie, what about us? <laughs> As with his biography, Robbie again speculates on sexuality. We brought in an expert to help us work out what's going on in Robbie's head. Women kiss and tell, and can you imagine so then if you're not great in bed, everyone will know about it. And this must put him under such pressure. And so when, when he talks about being gay, a lot of his comments are not so much that I think I'm gay, but I'd rather be gay. He talks about, I wish I was turned on by blokes. And that really, for me, reflects the fact that he finds it so difficult to be with women. Which is maybe why for Robbie, even when he's not drinking, in life the glass is always half empty. I've stopped drinking and taking drugs, but still there's this thing that says, if you do it this time, it will be fine. 
Stephanie West, BBC News. But without the fully shirt. Alex, yeah. big new haircut. I mean, you could play him in some biopic, couldn't you? I think. <laughs> you look a little bit like him. Do I look a little bit like him? Well, tough well, butch and a bit devilish. Do they make yeah. all the men at EastEnders have that haircut? Yeah, yeah it is. Enforced. As soon as you reach a, you reach yeah. a year, that's it. Everybody gets a head shave. Yeah. Barbara Windsor had yeah. it done. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Pauline had it. June Brown had it done recently. She as looked well. good. Yeah. I'm Peggy Mitchell's new love child coming into the series. That's why yeah, I've had my hair. Well, you've just had it done. Tank girl, didn't she? Babs Windsor. Yeah, she She's did. Great. Yeah. Getting back to uh, Robbie Williams, <laughs> do you think this, this constant am I, do I, will I take it wherever, whichever way, do you think that makes him more interesting or are we just getting a bit bored I this? tell you what I think, Christopher. I think he's actually trying to make him sound a little bit more interesting than he actually really is. Mm -hmm. I think that's what he's doing. Uh, I always feel uh, rather puzzled by the sort of uh, hearts on the sleeve exposés. I mean, Jerry's done it, the mm. Beckons have done it. And there is something horribly compulsive mm. about them. It's like mm. watching a car crash. But surely but they get to edit it's... it and all that themselves, so they can make yeah. themselves look however they want. Do you, do you feel the need sometimes? Because a lot of soap stars are in the papers an awful lot of the time. I mean, they kind of... And they do work together on occasions, mm. press offices and that kind of... I'm not mm. necessarily talking about EastEnders, <laughs> but, no. you know, it has been known <laughs> in the past. Do you feel that you need to be in the papers sometimes to just mm. keep your yourselves or your characters alive, yeah. hand on heart. Yeah, I mean, I think you do. You have to be in the papers sometimes. Yeah, you've got to keep your name out there. But and also, if you think you've done a good job. This kind of, um, but yeah, if you're really proud of what you've done, you don't want, you know, you, you, we, we would push it, don't you? Yeah. You don't want to. But just I think you can are... tell when people put things out there, as you say, they want to seem more interesting or they want to get more publicity, they put something out there like this whole thing that Robbie's talking what about. about. I don't falling, know if I don't have a problem with it. What about falling uh, kind mm. of premieres or falling out of dresses, all that kind of stuff? Oh, I can't be doing with all that falling no. out of dresses and all that sort of nonsense, <laughs> now. Have they ever tried, has the designer tried to put you in a kind of a see-through dress ever no, with one, one did cup? No, one did with me. <laughs> <laughs> one did with me. <laughs> and I tore I was it off none of it. I there is a certain You're not upstaging me. me. <laughs> Just chaos on the bonquet. <laughs> sorry. It will be. We're just yeah. sorry. But your cups in, isn't it? Like, yeah, yeah, cups are in, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Wedged in there, love, in my lace. Yeah, it's, it's amazing it's how many times they try today. and take photographs under the girls' dresses when they yeah. go out. Yeah. Do you know when you get the kind of the paparazzi who specifically hide underneath the car yeah. like that, waiting for it to take But don't you think there, it, there, there is like a... We've got to move on, oh, unfortunately. Sorry. We're sorry. <laughs> discussing I crotch shots. I have a devastatingly interesting point. You can post your views one at a time or there'll be slaps and there'll be fines like they do on EastEnders. They'll fine people. We do, yeah. Now, you can post your views about Robbie and uh, anything else that takes your fancy, not me, on our website. There's also plenty of I shabby prizes you. on offer. If you go to bbc.co.uk slash liquid news, <laughs> this <laughs> week we've got <laughs> pyramids full of stuff from the Mummy Returns movie, including That's DVD good. box sets, signed posters and very authentic Can bandages. I be a shabby prize too? Look. I will slap you in a second, I promise you I will. But not really, because that's domestic abuse, which is what you two are doing yes, anyway. Yes. Up that's, next, that's... oh, I segged myself out of that quite nicely. Up that next, Madge is still mad for it, plus talking with dinosaurs. Genesis go digital. George Michael's knocking one out and he's getting Universal to give him a hand. The goatee bearded one has sorted out a groundbreaking one single deal. Instead of being made to sign for a minimum of four or five albums, his only commitment is one seven inch. He wants to see how much effort Universal puts into flogging his issue before he does any more for them. George has had a massive chip on his shoulder ever since he lost a court case to cut his contract with Sony. That was back in 1994. Now, the music world thought she'd drowned her blonde ambition, but Madonna has confirmed she's not yet ready to confine her conical bra to the dusty bin of pop just yet. Yeah. You're right. A bit transfixed by the <laughs> yeah, lights yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Bless you. Yeah, we just switched over. Off. He's glazed over. In a BBC interview, Mrs Ritchie said she's planning another tour and another album. She also told Radio 1 she likes nothing better than shooting little cuddly pheasants stone cold dead. Yeah, that's Alex all Tanga. we deserve. Let me get to the report, woman. <laughs> Alex Stanger has this report for Liquid News. <laughs> All to speak, this talk was around. She's not going out on tour again either. Mm. So there will be live dates from Madonna again. I should never say never. I would never say I was never going to do anything again. Yep, for all of you who forked out for Madge's last tour, sorry, it's not her last. And that greatest hits cleverly released just before Christmas album isn't likely to be Ma Ritchie's swan song either. The mum of two told mum of three Joe Wiley she was ready to get back to the studio. Her music partner in crime, Mia Waves, is ready to strum away. And he'll be sharing the studio space with this chap, Lay Rhythm Digital's Stuart Price. We started fooling around with remixes and redoing a lot of the tracks for the actual live show. And then we, we talked about working on 
stuff for my next album, and he's already working on music for me, so we're gonna, I'm going to try that collaboration as well. When, for example, William Orbit was working with Madonna or whoever works with Madonna, there's always going to be that journey that they make towards her style and vice versa. So there's going to be somewhere in the middle, but um, he's certainly someone who's going to have plenty of interesting ideas to offer her. Mrs. Ritchie also confirmed she'll be recording her next album in London, which gives her more time to enjoy her new home here, a stone's throw away from Oxford Street. Basically, Guy threatened to leave me, and then I said, OK. <laughs> <laughs> Guy is just completely freaked out by New York. He just thinks it's too crazy. So that leaves London by default. So it seems Guy is well and truly wearing the Richie household pair of trousers. And when him indoors is also directing you in love, sex, drugs and money, well, all that headiness is enough to test any year-old marriage. The hard part was changing, you know, was wearing the wife hat, knowing when to take off the wife hat and put on the actress hat. With the trendy critics' favourite, Mr Ritchie, whispering his direction into his wife's ear, fingers are firmly crossed his third movie will give Madonna the acting credibility she famously craves. As he tweaks the tapes in post-production, Madonna's free to pick out the curtains and boss the workmen around their new home. And they better not get on the wrong side of this lady. She also told Joe her new fake pastime is blood sports. Alex Stanger, BBC News. Should she carry on, Emma, to the point where she oh. ends up looking like Pauline Fowler? Not to that point. That's going to extremes, Christopher. I don't think anybody wants that. But I think Madonna, she's unique, she's fantastic, and she should keep going as long as we want her, and we still want her. When is the time to stop, Casey? Uh, when is the time to stop? Um, well, oh, oh, I don't know. Um, when your hair falls out. I reckon that's the time to stop. Well, you yeah, see, working break. on that basis, I shouldn't be here today. Really. Probably. <laughs> no, it's for women. You oh, know, right, you know, okay. She does like the old bleach, doesn't she? Mm. Do you yeah, know what pr I mean? probably when your breasts start looking like billiard balls in socks, that's a good time to stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that basis as well, I yeah. really think I should I'm stop finished. as well. And that's it. Yeah, uh, just, I'm quite interested in EastEnders. We're not going to ask you the question whether you all get on, but you all do, obviously, don't you? Of yes, course. yes. Who, who yes. are your friends? Who are your friends? Uh, normally, the people you work with a, a lot. Because I don't get to see people like Martin Kemp, unfortunately. Mm. Because, uh, but it's probably good. Like. Is there anyone I don't like? like? No, there's not really. Because if see, you see, I wasn't asking that question because they never answer it properly. Of course yeah. they're right. It's like working yeah. in an office. Of course there are going to be people yeah. you don't you get have on to with. See love everyone. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, we, we work everyone. so much together all yeah. the time. You know, you've got to get on with everyone. Otherwise, you know, handbags at dawn's a bit too much. Yeah. Yeah. You fell into that show business soap trap. I know I did. I know I did. I put my hand up. You've left, haven't you? I've left. I've left the building, yes, you've I have. Left the I can see Maybe you've, left, you've left EastEnders, haven't yeah, you, Yeah, uh, well, I haven't left, uh, exactly. I'm kind of... Uh, I'm taking a little bit of a... Oh, in negotiation. A little bit of a break. Mm. And that's why my hair is all shaved off. Because I decided if I'm not going to be Trevor for a while, get rid of him now. Yeah, but, but Christmas. Well, I think it's a nice... Christmas, yeah, uh, Christmas over there. Yeah. We've yeah. got more of the week's entertainment news coming. <gasps> You're looking yeah. excited. Oh, right? yeah. 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 Now, they're as fashionable as a weekend break in Mogadishu and as cutting edge as a plastic spoon, but Genesis have an army of loyal fans who'll be thrilled to know that the band's first live DVD... Can mm. everyone stop looking at auto Sorry. Thank you very much. I'm pretending that I remembered the whole thing. <laughs> me, the me, first me, live him. DVD is called The Way We Walk and it's out this week <laughs> to celebrate. Scary. Phil Collins popped over to London from Switzerland uh, to join up with his former bandmates and defend the art of the drum solo. Colin Patterson has this report <laughs> for Liquid News. In the beginning, there was the video cassette. Now Genesis have said, let there be DVD. Their 1992 Ellscore gigs are out in disc and Phil Collins' bald spots can be viewed from 16 different angles. But the band are relieved it's a return to Genesis of the 90s and not the 70s. It's one o'clock, time for lunch. Fandy damny day. Or the DVD extras would have had to include Goblin Cam. Well, a, a career of Spinal Tap moments, but I can't think the of The Lamb Lies Down was actually a, you know, a series of Spinal Tap moments, really, especially when you see Spinal Tap now and the, the pod, you know. We came close to the pod a few times. <laughs> Warned, this set still includes a Phil Collins drum solo. Ah, now you're talking. <laughs> I think we've edited it down a bit, haven't we? Have we? I think we have. Oh, 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 oh just got to have a few. Bring it on. In true DVD style, there's the option of hearing a commentary from the band. We didn't do Los Anderson. No, not no, this time. And to tie in, for those of you watching in digital, this liquid news report comes with added commentary from Genesis. 
Wasn't sure about the jumper. This guy's questions are rubbish. This guy hasn't got a clue what he's talking about. Colin Patterson, BBC News. I never worked that out. This is what? Oh, it's just a studio. Who knows what it means? We look like Phil Collins, which is quite worrying. Yeah, it is quite worrying. That's just saying. We're not going to discuss Genesis anymore. No, everyone no, will be we'll lose the, everyone Agent will lose the world Up next on yeah. this edition, we're back in Albert Square, and this time the only queen, luckily, is the pub. Mm. Do you go clubbing a lot? Do I go clubbing? Well, you can tell by that little dance, <laughs> little <shimmy>. you there. <laughs> Work in your cups. Our feature <laughs> guests tonight have an on-screen marriage made in the fiery depths of TV hell. Alex and Casey play Trevor and Little Moni Stenders, in case you don't watch it. He, the boozy, cheating wife abuser. She, the quiet, downtrodden victim, determined to stand by her nasty, nasty man in a nasty, nasty cardigan. Yes. Oh, yes. The couple are at the centre of a controversial domestic violence storyline, and deep fat friars may lie at the root of the problem. <laughs> Let's watch and learn together. So, where have you been? Just to the shop. Right. Where's the deep fat friar? I don't know what you're talking about. What are you doing? You must think I'm an idiot, eh? No. All right, so I'll ask you again. Where's the deep fat fryer? Well, I don't know. Ask Paul. <laughs> what have I done? Upstairs. Why? I don't want to have to ask you twice. Or do you want me to lose my temper? <laughs> Never, ever, ever combine a Scots room oh, with a deep fat fryer. <laughs> the Mars bars are in there. The cans of super lager are in there. Obviously, out of context, it's, yes, it's, out it of can't take us on a kind of, kind of John Lewis domestic appliance <laughs> kind of feel to it. Yes. But can you... Um, was there a problem with kind of onion rings? What was going on there? Uh, it's the deep fat fryer thing. I think it's got to do with the... Um, because uh, there's a problem with I don't get invited to the wedding where she does. Yeah. So um, this is Lynn's wedding. Lynn's wedding, and to I kind Gary. of yeah. uh, and I think I'm a, I take it for granted I'm invited, yeah. but I'm not. And so Mo, say, being the classy bird she is, she buys Lynn a deep fat fryer. She, she's she's nice, married to a nice. Scotsman, so that's the first thing that comes to Tell, us, tell us a little, as much as you can, because there are rules about what you can and can't yeah. say, of course, mm. about the storyline that you, you have coming up uh, next week and beyond that, because it is huge, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, mm. it sort of rock, starts next week and it just it's just a pile of viciousness until Christmas, really. Yeah. Is that all you can really tell us? Yes. About? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, you want a little yeah. bit more. Well, I think I even know a little time? bit more than that. Um, yeah. it's, 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 we're talking about domestic violence. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. There's a, there's um, there's a kind of, uh, when I say a rape, it's a rape. You know, there's a kind of. Uh, there's, there's an assault. There's an assault, there's an assault. attack. It's, it's, it's unclear as to what's actually happened. Yeah. And, um, but there was loads of stuff in the paper about, you know, oh, I stab him and all that, and that's not true. That's not right. true at all. So no. I don't know where they got that from. It's, it's a difficult kind of storyline to tackle at that time of, of night, really, when yeah. it airs in this country. I mean, were you happy when you were given it? I mean, of course, the answer is yes, but mm. I mean, because it has been visited before in, in soaps. Yeah, How did you feel? Yeah, but not sort of like this. Normally, what they do is in soaps is that, you know, one, the, the bloke gives his wife a slap and then it's all over and then they're all happy again after three episodes. Mm. Actually, they've handled it really brilliantly on this because mm. they've done it over a long period of time. And the stats are actually all Awful, you know, one in four women is, is, you know, hit by their partner or suffers abuse at home. Mm. So that's pretty bad. Mm. So I don't think you can, um, uh, you can handle, you know, you have to handle that sort of thing, you know, properly. I mean, yeah. they, they, I take my hat off to them in the sense that they allowed us to take it to as far as we could in terms of the watershed. Mm. I mean, there was no, no punches pulled on yeah. it. So I mean. Hats, you know, I take my hat off to them for allowing us to do Great storylines coming up. As a soap expert, um, any, yeah. any real life kind of true gritty questions we can ask them about, you know, whatever happened to Roly the Poodle and things like that? Oh, Something you want to know? Roly the Poodle. I know. But I'd, I, I would like to know actually, is, is Mike Reed coming back, the, the fantastic Frank? Yeah, I think they've done a special over in Spain. Yeah. But as for yeah. Roly the Poodle, I think he's, he's, um, he was shaved and it was made into Tish Dean's hair. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Anyone reckon so, don't you? <laughs> Talking of her, Anyone Babs gets? Windsor. It's a wig, yes. isn't it? Well, yes, yeah. it's a yeah. wig. No, yeah, I don't know. I just like to make these wig. things out. Oh. That's lovely. Maybe something you mm. should think about. Do you know, I don't think it would necessarily work. Idea. EastEnders are brilliant at the moment, and yeah. you're coming back, aren't you? Yes, I will be back. I'm sure I'll be back. Mm. You know, so. Dean Gaffney. What's Dean. that about? What, what do you mean, what's that about? Dean? Is he? Yeah, he's lovely. Mm. He's a lovely geezer. He gets so much bad press and it's not fair. Yeah, well, he's always falling over outside tramps. Mm. Yeah, but he's a baby. <laughs> he's only tiny. Oh, you know, he's, he's about... Tramps and nightclub anyway. or... 
just the best place I hang. Anyway, thank you very much for coming. <laughs> Stay yes, the rest right. of the uh, programme. EastEnders looking good next week. There was an exclusive clip for you. Now, still ahead on this edition, the amateur strikes back, the man putting Princess Leia in the family way. That's oh. next. They're just friend. workshopping their appearance Sorry. in the show. That was nice. <laughs> now, the Force was so badly with a Star Wars fan that he's managed to beat George Lucas to it and produce the next unofficial film instalment. Mm. That's, that's oh, a very well, good mouth made you know that. Now, the true amateur home movie called Dark Skies was made on a shoestring budget and the makers throwing everything in, including the kitchen sink and his mother-in-law. Claire McDonald goes hand solo for Liquid News. When I was a kid, I was so desperate to see ABBA the movie that I forced my parents to sit outside numerous cinemas in Essex till we finally got in. The man who lives in this house was so frustrated at waiting for the next Star Wars film to come out, he decided to make it himself. And this is the result. More than a year in the making, Star Wars The Dark Skies is an 18-minute mini-masterpiece from self-confessed Star Wars obsessive David Nutley. Question is, why in the name of Jar Jar Binks did he do it? I've been a fan of Star Wars for pretty well my entire life, since 1977. And uh, I suddenly, you know, stumbled across it and thought, wow, we can do this, talk to Mickey about it, and you know, a year later we've made our own little fan film. And I think you'll agree that with just a digital video camera and a home computer at hand for the special effects, the results are pretty spectacular. Hard to believe that an impressive bit of celluloid you just saw cost just £500 to make, but the most staggering thing is that most of it was filmed in this spare room. David wasted no time roping the entire family into the filmmaking process. Creative casting, shall we say, saw his mother-in-law take on the role of the most evil person in the universe. Funny that. Uh, David's a stickler for perfection, so there was lots of retakes. Uh, because the lights were underneath me, this costume got incredibly heavy. And when I wanted to give up, he wouldn't let me. OK, so George Lucas has purpose-built sound stages in Hertfordshire and billion-dollar budgets, but the Nutleys have got a wood at the bottom of their garden, a handy location for the fight sequences. We really had to get it all done in one day, and trying to change the sequences and get them to look realistic rather than just a mm -mm -mm was actually quite difficult. The great and the good of Hampshire, well, that's Matt Letizier then, will be sewing on the sequence for the premiere of Star Wars The Dark Skies next week at a local cinema. And in keeping with the low-cost nature of this project, hiring the venue only set them back 200 quid. Bargain. Claire McDonnell, BBC News. Absolutely fantastic. I think that was better than The Phantom Menace. Yes, I think it's definitely awesome. better. Than has, has Hollywood been calling for you at all yet? No, not yet, no. Because no. Hollywood... My number is. <laughs> Hollywood did call for you, didn't you? You did this American advert where you checked penises. Yes, I was... Excuse I was, me? I know, little Mo is a penile <laughs> expert. <laughs> It was an what advert, literally. wasn't it? For ca advert for cars. For Mini Cooper. Yeah, yeah, advert yeah. for the Mini Cooper. And I had to look through um, loads of... I was a game show home host... I was a game show contestant. Yeah. And my... The, my uh, thing was that, was that I could tell what car a man drove by the size of his willy. I was up to nice. that one. See, they used well, to you know, that this A little bit too enthusiastic. It's time to say goodbye. Lovely to meet you both. Thank nice you very much you. for coming in. And lovely to see you. Oh, Christopher, it's always a pleasure. I'll be spanking you after the show. Oh, Christmas has come <laughs> early. <laughs> both of us. Santa sack. Before we go, a look at this week's top stories. The Queen has been doing the Lambeth Walk around a set of EastEnders. Lovely colour, that lime green. Oh. Uh, Robbie Williams has told a new documentary that hotel baths are too small for all his groupies. And a man from Winchester has made a homemade mini Star Wars episode in his spare bedroom. Well done, Matt. That is it from us for more of the very latest entertainment news. Join us live at 7 o'clock every weeknight. That's on BBC Choice for you too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, next week's guests include uh, Hugh Cornwall from The Stranglers and Rent Boy star Adam Rickett. We're back on BBC One next Thursday night as always. My name's Christopher. Thank you for watching. Good night. Good night. <laughs>